For hundreds of years, writers and scientists alike have wondered about mining the sky. But what happens when we start scheming on giant rocks of gold, platinum, and other metals? Will we bring home enough gold and platinum to crash the market? Or just a rock big enough to crash the planet? There's only one way to find out. This is Space Greed. When gold was discovered in California in 1848, there was already plenty of interest in going out west. Within a year, thousands of immigrants were heading down the California Trail with one goal, find gold and make money. Endless sacrifice and pain fueled by the desire to lay claim to scattered pockets of precious metal that fell to earth from skies above. More than four billion years ago, the earth was very hot and very liquid. Its giant size and resulting force of gravity pushed all the heavy elements down to Earth's center. As a result, the Earth's crust is mostly devoid of them, except, of course, for select pockets. These pockets of the heavy elements that we mine today are all likely to have come down from space. The desire to go up there to retrieve these heavy metals instead of waiting around another few million years for them to fall from the heavens isn't a new idea. But what has changed is the technology necessary to track and capture a nearby asteroid has become accessible. But now that we can get up there, is it worth it? In the last 75 years, our production of metals has increased more than 20-fold. Experts believe that we'll run out of some crucial industrial metals in the next few decades. So it stands to reason, either we'll need to drastically change how we consume resources here on Earth, or we'll need to look to the heavens, and potentially asteroids, for more of those precious resources. Let's get some background on asteroids and why they might have the metals we're looking for. Asteroids are rocks left over from our solar system's formation about 4.6 billion years ago. They're mostly found in the Sun's orbit, in a belt between Mars and Jupiter. There are literally millions of asteroids, ranging in size from several hundreds of miles across to as little as half a mile across. But there are three main types, carbonaceous, stony, and metallic. The most common are carbonaceous, aka C-type asteroids. These contain lots of water and carbon, but not many other high-value minerals. The second most common type of asteroid are stony, or S-type asteroids. These mainly contain iron and magnesium, but also substantial quantities of precious metals. The last 8% or so are very rich in metals, hence the name metallic, or M-type asteroids. M-type asteroids are 80% iron, but also contain platinum, gold, palladium, and other valuable metals. 16 Psyche is a legendary metallic asteroid. Comprised mostly of metallic iron and nickel, just like Earth's core, there's a good chance that Psyche is the cold exposed interior of an early planet that lost its rocky layers billions of years ago. Psyche has enough iron and nickel to last us and our endlessly consuming ways for several million years. And as a bonus, it comes with tons of other precious metals. Psyche has a lot of gold, an estimated 10,000 quadrillion dollars worth at current prices. The expected value of those so-called precious metals would only hold as long as the metals themselves remained high up in space. Funny enough, at one point, a metal that you probably take for granted was super rare too, aluminum. Back in 1852, aluminum cost $34 per ounce and gold cost $19 per ounce. But as technology improved, it became easier to manufacture and aluminum's many practical uses came to the forefront. And just like with aluminum, an extreme surplus of gold could open the door to the discovery of many other uses. As it stands today, astronaut helmets and space vehicles have a gold-coated film on them to help reflect and minimize the harmful effects of solar radiation. Would we see a world where gold was used to help lower cooling costs on large glass buildings? Cheap and plentiful gold might not be a check made out to cash, but for an industrious and ambitious corporation, it still might end up being a big payday. But that ambitious corporation has to get the asteroids first. 
one relatively simple way to accomplish this would be to track a suitable asteroid, swing by and grab whatever materials you wanted, and bring it back to Earth for further processing. But even if the cost of moving stuff through space falls, as it is expected to, this method might just be too expensive. If we want to mine asteroids commercially on a large scale, it would take a lot of effort to keep the many people we send out there from dying. That means all the food and water necessary to keep the crew alive and alert, or the technology necessary to manufacture food and water from things found in space, would have to be dragged up from Earth's deep gravity well and almost halfway across the solar system. Every single gram of mass that leaves Earth's orbit has a cost attached, and the more mass we pack, the more energy we will need to travel. Even with several humans wearing spacesuits and robots wearing their cute branded hard hats, chopping up bits and pieces from a flying asteroid would be incredibly time consuming. The trip out there will take years, plus several months to study the rock and several more to set up mining operations. Humans might lose their lives or their minds on a trip that long. Instead of having to supply and staff a mission that could take decades and billions of dollars, it would be more cost effective to drag these giant valuable rocks back home, where the long and dangerous process of cracking them open can happen in our own backyard. Parking a 500 ton asteroid around the moon would provide a unique, meaningful, easy to reach destination for astronaut exploration for decades. Similar to mining an asteroid, capturing one would begin by launching a spacecraft capable of escaping Earth's orbit. It would take a few years to reach a near-Earth asteroid, and once we're there, two distinct phases would kick off. During the first phase, the target asteroid would be studied thoroughly to understand its size, rotation, and surface topography. Then, in the second phase, the spacecraft would begin the incredibly complicated but also incredibly cool process of capturing and de-spinning the asteroid. To accomplish this, the spacecraft would match the target rock's rotation, then with a specially designed mechanism, capture it and secure it firmly to the spacecraft. Then using the spacecraft's own propulsion, the craft would de-spin the newly bonded combination. Then that powerful electric propulsion system would rip the asteroid from its orbit and begin the return journey home back to the moon. After reaching the moon, the asteroid would get parked in high lunar orbit. The spacecraft would stay attached to support all the humans and robots hard at work and act as a base of operations. A local visit to the asteroid would allow crews to spend more time working on the rock and less time traveling to the rock. Think astronaut missions that would take a few weeks instead of a few years. Saving time is great, but less time traveling would also significantly reduce the radiation hazard facing the crew. Every time a human leaves Earth's protective atmosphere, they're bombarded with several times more radiation than they'd face if they lived a lifetime or two on Earth. Parking an asteroid in high lunar orbit instead of low Earth orbit is both smart and terrifying, because since the Earth has a much deeper gravity well than the Moon, we're limited in how big of a rock we're able to work with. Dragging more mass requires more energy. In other words, parking it by the moon gives us the chance to bring home a much bigger rock. But bringing home a bigger rock also opens the door for potential issues. Parking the asteroid in high lunar orbit is ideal because if the rock had to crash somewhere, barring a freak miscalculation in regards to its trajectory, it would hit the moon and not the Earth. The size and mass of the asteroid we're bringing back has to be a comparable size to the many other meteorites which routinely burn up harmlessly in Earth's atmosphere. But if the lust for profit drives us to bring home something too large or too dense, we could be effectively shooting ourselves in the foot by bringing home something large or dense enough to survive an unplanned collision with the moon or Earth. Ideally, we'd be shooting from one of those C-type or carbonaceous asteroids, since C-type asteroids are known to be too weak to survive entry through the Earth's atmosphere. But if greed were to drive someone to drag an M-type or a metallic asteroid back home, the metallic core is something that could potentially beat our atmosphere in a galactic game of rock-paper-scissors. But perhaps what would be worth more than the promise of platinum and gold on an astronomical scale would be the earned attention and excitement around this new stage of human exploration in space. Once astronauts begin the long and difficult process of examining and breaking down an asteroid of several hundred metric tons, there will be a steady flow of real-time exploration content streamed to millions, if not billions, of screens across the globe. 
But a mass rush to exploit asteroids could only complicate the matter. For example, asteroid 99942 Apophis, an asteroid that will have a close approach to Earth in 2029. As luck would have it, Apophis has a surprisingly large number of gravitational keyholes near its current orbit. Gravitational keyholes are tiny regions in space where a planet could gravitationally influence an asteroid's path through space. As of now, Apophis is not predicted to enter any keyholes, and it should stay safely away from us. But if a future mission to the asteroid went awry somehow, like if a lander crashed into it instead of landing on it, the resulting impact could accidentally move Apophis into a keyhole and alter its path, sending the rock on a collision course with Earth. Moving asteroids and gently parking them until we need them sounds like science fiction, but it could very easily become science history one day. Capturing large asteroids will also capture the attention of the entire planet. Which is exactly the kind of attention, press, and retweets that Branson, Bezos, and Musk live for. Hopefully we don't let greed drive us to bring home a rock too big or disrupt the delicate dance of asteroids in our solar system. We can't fumble the rock, especially when the stakes are this high. For more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to this channel right now and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any great content. And look out for Curiosity Stream on social media. Links are in the description.